All right, well, we're gonna make a strop. And it's gonna be for big knives, not little tiny knives, but like big knives, fillet knives. Got lucky. My dad used to make wallets. So I got this cowhide here. We got the shiny side and then the rough side. I'm gonna go with the rougher side, I guess you could say. I could almost, I got enough here, I could do one side shiny, one side rough, but what I have here is I got this piece of leather underneath here. It's got all jaggedy parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it underneath this board. This board, everything's left over. Left over from uh, working on the house. And let's see, I'm going to line this up so I don't have to do a whole bunch of cuts. There we go. I think it's all lined up under there. And then I'm going to pull out my Gerber with a brand new razor blade on it. There we go. Oh, that, that did quick work of that. And then I'm going to cut here. front of the board Oop. didn't get it very good there yeah this is going to be for uh, big fillet knives all right I'm going to try to square this off without losing or wasting any Yep, a strop for big knives. Fillet knives. Dexter Russell. Because you can run them on your work sharp and all that. But this little bit of stropping really hones those edges. I sat, and y'all know this is my favorite, the little more Eldris. I've stropped this, and I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, look at this, watch. I mean, you could say, geez, you could do that with any knife. I'm sure you could. But here's a complete razor blade. Yeah. But this is a supposedly woodcrafter, bushcrafter, or I'm an anti-bushcrafter, but that is just an ungodly edge on there. And it's all from just stropping with the rouge. My dad called that stuff rouge. Is the polishing compound. That's an old term, I guess. Nobody calls it rouge anymore. But there you go. All I have to do is get this down on here. I could use the old uh, spray adhesive. That's what I see other people doing. There's the smooth side. Or, you know, in all reality, you could just... I don't see why you just can't tack it down with some, some little tacks. But I'll try this adhesive stuff. Get this board. This board needs to be nice and clean if we're going to do that. And I need to cut it. I can tell right there is my line. So let me cut this and I'll be right back. 
Yeah, we're rocking it old school here. Why get out the power and all that stuff and break out the saw and all that crap just to do a little board like this, right? Right. Well, here's some Loctite spray adhesive left over from another job. I don't even remember what I was using this for. Wood, metal, acrylic, foam, fabric, polyethylene, and PVC. High performance, middleweight bonding. Well, we'll see how good they do it does on this. Again, spray it, but let it sit. And let it sit, and then take the leather, spray it, and then let it sit. Oop, I want to go on the smooth side. Boy, I'll tell you, that smooth side sure is nice, though. Well, I'm going to go with the other side just because it might do a better job, and that's what a lot of guys talk about is using the other side. So we'll spray this and let it sit because this ain't, you know, this is con like contact cement that you're spraying. So you got to let it dry, I believe. Get a really good coat on here. If it'll spray right. And let her sit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick the two together. And that ought to be fun. So that's as simple as making a leather strop, folks. I got real lucky. His pops had a bunch of this old leather from making biker wallets. <laughs> so, all I did was have just a little bit of this for waste. And that's it. Let this dry, and then we're going to stick it together and see what happens. Well, I think I'm going to give it a shot here, folks. I think uh, once you do this, it's pretty much a done deal. There ain't going to be no moving it around. So, I hope you can see it. I got the GoPro Hero Sessions 4 sitting attached to my shirt. Okay, looks like it's, looks like she's doing it, baby. I'm just going to go down on here. There we go. Oh, looks like it's a little long. Hmm. It's because I probably didn't go all the way to the very, very, very end here. So then, just put the old rouge all over this, and I got me a giant strop. For my big Dexter Russells, you know, big Dexter Russell, get those babies. I take pride in my fish cleaning because I just, I like zipping their sides off. I don't think that's going to go anywhere, to tell you the truth. I think I'll trim off this little edge here. Of course, get out my Gerber EDC here. And let's see. There we go. All right. Keep nice new blades in there. Gerber. All right. I'm liking it. So maybe the next thing is, is me using it and showing you. So all I did was 
use some uh, Loctite spray adhesive. Now I know for most people, you know, getting a big chunk of leather like this, well, it might not be bad. Locally, you never know. You go to a craft place, and you can maybe pick yourself up a scrap. I don't know. You don't have to go to a fancy place. There is no Tandy leather stores around anymore. I remember when I was a kid, Tandy was the deal. So there you go. That's as easy as pie making a strop. Okay, maybe the next one will be uh, using it. All right, well, this is that polishing compound I got at Harbor Freight. It was real cheap. Uh, let's see, compound is used for high polish finish on copper, brass, stainless steel, and steel. So, all you do is just rub it on the leather here. I know this drops probably everybody. Oh, that's too big. It's kind of over overkill. Yeah, what the hell. I wanted to make a big one. There's lots of videos on making these and using these. You know, for the knife aficionados. Most guys ain't using them for nothing but a pocket knife. Saw one guy. He was uh, stropping his axe. And one of the keys that one fella said, which is true, is you could take some mineral oil and it'll help work this into the leather and at the same time you let that dry and it kind of soaks it in all right let's get the dexter russells out and give it a shot all right here's the one that if you saw my other video you can see remnants of the black coating right here let me turn this light you can see remnants of the black coating but that's what was underneath the black coating and then what i did is i polished it with this stuff so that's what's underneath your black coating so when you strop you go like that See, this extra wide strop is what I wanted for pulling the knife. I'm going to have to put a, put a nail here or something and make a stopper. Well, it's not slipping around too bad. But, well, let me put it up against here. And you just do that. Hold it up on an angle. And you're wanting to get that edge. And you can see the compound darkening where I hit it. Hold some pressure on it. And what you're doing is you're polishing that edge. I got two more to do. Because I really, really want these knives mega sharp. Because, boy, I'll tell you, it's so much easier cleaning fish with absolutely wicked sharp knives. The last time I was out, I cleaned some whiting. It, my knives after sharpening were so sharp I took a whiting and went to fillet them and went like that and cut them right in half. Alright, let's see how 
off she is after the good sharpening you really need it when you got <laughs> I just cut right through a fish god dang yeah I'd say it was a little sharp move this to the other end and get the other side I'd like to keep these hair popping sharp if I could yeah this is working out good this is working out good having a big old strop for bigger knives oh yeah I start to see that sh that edge is getting nice and shiny but there you go folks that's making a big strop for your bigger knives and keeping those fillet knives mega sharp anybody can do this anybody can do that not everybody can do this My stress away, I want to go fishing Try and cast my blues away, I want to go fishing I don't want to watch the clock, I want